Now it is time to present the induction of Chapman's National Championship Baseball Team from 2003. This team, become, yes, this team becomes the fourth team in Chapman history to earn this high recognition and is the second Panther baseball team to be inducted. 2003 season was a magical one under the leadership of then first-year head coach Tom Tereszczyk, who took a revitalized baseball program and with the long history of success and authored a storybook ending 35 years in the making. Enjoy this video and the reflections of the 2003 Chapman Baseball National Championship season. Sometimes things seem like it's destiny or meant to happen. I remember, you know, at the beginning of the year, Dave and I sitting there in the office and we had a lot of names, we had everybody up on the board and, and the big thing was, okay, okay, we gotta get to know who these guys are as quickly as possible, what, what their background is and, and all of that. Also, it was super important and really helpful to identify who, you know, the natural leadership of the team was. You know, that was a great thing about that team. We had a core of guys that were really outstanding leaders and great competitors. It's such a cohesive group of people together, you know, going, you know, trying to get towards the promised land that, that really, I think the coaching staff being new for us um, was, was a great thing for team chemistry. It made us come together I think, even quicker than we, than we would have. But there were no clicks, man. There were no clicks. Everybody hung out together. They usually came to our place. So we were we were hanging out. We were playing NBA Jam together and having tournaments, and we were just we just hung out together all the time. And the five five or six of us freshmen too coming in, it, it was instant too. It wasn't oh the seniors hang out together and the upperclassmen are together. I felt included since day one. I could I could bet Brew and Johnny and Cotto. Every, everyone was included like they were you know just as important as the next. And I think that set a precedence for the program just at T's time. And, and that's what the good teams do. The good teams all mold together. They don't have the different groups. They don't, pitchers don't hang out together and the hitters hang out together or the people from different cultures are hanging out together. Everybody was one. That's what made that team so special and still makes this team so special. So we got off to a little bit of a rough start, but one thing that we, you know, always believed in is making practice as as much a game si simulated experience as possible all the crazy things that can happen in a game are going to come up in practice because we're just repping each of those situations the practices just were such grinds and game ready just trials so when you got to the actual games that count between the lines we were prepared more than any other team because of the practices and the challenges that they put us through with the plans. Eddie sitting 45 feet away, throwing the sliders at us during live VPs. Coach T was able to bring the best out of every player. Like he took you to your limit. He screamed at me so many times. I, in my, your head will spin. But you know what? If you could take some of the some of the screaming, I mean, you became a better player, and I think I became a better person after all that. He let us play in the games. Like, that was all practice. That happened during practice. During games, that wasn't T. Like, games were the time to, to take off all of that and perform. And that, that, that's just one of the special parts about T as well. He understands that that work is done in practice, and the game's time to perform. And then we hit a streak. We just really put the pedal to the metal there. I'm not sure how many we won in a row, but it was, I don't know, it was 15, 16, 17 or something games we won in a row. Champions, I think, in anything, great competitors or whatever, they all have things that, uh, that they use, different, you know, whatever, strategies or whatever, that they use to put themselves in the right place mentally. And that team had a lot of different things that they did that were fun, that were funny. One thing I think is crazy is that we put, it felt like way more effort into our pregame flip games. And we were grinding through those things. And then once the game showed up, it's like, whatever, man, we're good. Let's just go have a good time and play. You know, there's that video of CJ 
doing like the dance before he walked into the championship doubleheader, right? Like, come on, who's who? And then they show the shot of whatever the dude's name was at first base that Akamidi struck out a hundred times in that series, and he he is tighter than a drum, and we're dancing and playing flip. That tells you everything you needed to know about this team. And we were screaming Braveheart at the top of our lungs in the parking lot before that too. With Braveheart, I think, yeah, we really got into that because the guys who who weren't playing as much, we were just, and it didn't even matter. We were uh, pulling on every pitch and stealing signs in the dugout and relaying them through and, and everything from pregame rituals to to the last out. Braveheart probably came came from us because we were watching Major League every night before before we played and then doing Braveheart in the parking lot. And, and that just set such a cool tempo. And to see Al Lambert yelling and, and getting into it was like, uh, pretty motivational, I think, for everybody. When you when you're watching those movies and or the connection that, that, that happens, that you you can as a team something something happens. There's the chemistry there that you get you get something extra as the season came across and as the bonding happened, it just became very very special. In the World Series, and the third game was against Emory. It wasn't looking good there for a bit. I don't think we ever felt like we did the game was out of our control or anything. I was not scared at all. AK comes up, gets a single to center, and I round second. I was so excited, right? And I round second so far that I'm that I slipped putting on the brakes. I'm I could have got back ticked. And God, what a terrible way to end the year that would have been. It was my third time at the World Series. My freshman year, I made the final out of the World Series, striking out. My sophomore year, I made the final out of the World Series on a fly ball to left field. And I oh. came walking up to the plate right after Donahoe struck out, to, um, thinking, well, here we go again. I've been here three times. I'm gonna do this three times. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end the World Series three times. So, you know, everything in my mind was, I can't let that happen. And, uh, you know, thankfully I got lucky and had a jam shot that dropped behind second base. But then I'm on second and Graves just has that bat. I just remember I, I blacked out. Someone took a sweet picture of me just jumping up and down as I'm crossing home. And I don't remember at all. I, I totally blacked out. The next thing I remember is a dog pile at second base. It was such an incredible win. And once we won that, I remember I was rooming with Sanders in the hotel. I said, this is over. We, yeah. this, you win that game. I remember telling him that night and Brian was as sure as I was, this is over. You guys, you guys were all confident. I was nervous as hell. I remember getting up on the mound the first before the first pitch, and my left leg was quivering. No joke. Until I started like warming up, I was damn. I was nervous for sure. I don't think I spoke to anybody. You guys are all dancing. I was sitting over there biting my nails. But then when you guys just jumped out all over him, it was over. I'm happy and I'm grateful that I played my part in it. You know, just like them, each of those guys had to do their part and I feel like I did my part and I feel like Dave did his part. There's not too much I think more satisfying than getting a getting a, a group goal, you know, a team goal. It's a lot more satisfying really than individual goals. It's a lot more fun and just a lot more, you know, get you in here more than that. So I'm really happy that I was a part of it. Grateful, grateful. I'm really grateful that I was a part of it. And, and I love this team. I love all you guys. You guys are amazing. Team unity and uh, number one in the nation. It, uh, it just, it's epic. It doesn't get any better. And, and on that note, guys, I, I really want to do this justice, okay? So I'm going to the bullpen. I'm gonna to go to the bullpen on this, and what I'm gonna do, there's someone on our Hall of Fame selection committee that I'm gonna to ask to come induct and bring this coach and team into the Hall of Fame. Craig Bennett, get up here, man. Craig Bennett was part of that winning moment. Like you heard Terry Bozel talk about Dave Curry on the phone, Craig Bennett was there, and I, and I want him he has 60 seconds to say a, a word, <laughs> and I'm going to stand over the hook, but seriously. Yes. So nobody really asked the, uh, the perspective of an athletic trainer except 
for another athletic trainer. And so I can tell you the perspective that I have, and I think it's been attested to, watching their practices and watching everything that this team did was very intentional and purposeful and methodical. And it was practice. There's a scoring system to everything they did situationally. Well, then come game time, and it was said very well. Coach T was calm as could be. And every time, if it was two and one, we're hitting and run. We're going to bunt to first base. We're going to bunt to third base with runners on first and second. It was very predictable. But because of how well this team executed is exactly why they won. It, was, it wasn't easy, but it wasn't by accident. Uh, Coach Eddie is watching every pitch of that World Series and, and charting every batter and every pitch that was thrown for every other team. We knew exactly what was coming at us. These guys knew exactly what was coming. They knew what they were doing, and they were very well prepared. And you don't have a championship team without having that type of dedication and commitment. We were in the, there's some great photos of these guys spending six hours in the hotel room with me, doing treatments in the pool, everything they could do. And that was completely and 100% related to the commitment this team had to doing it and doing it right. And so everything about this team is so deserving of this. One of my all, this is my all-time favorite memory as an athletic trainer, but it was because of the opportunity to work with a team and a coaching staff that was so committed to excellence, but then to see the reward of it and to see the reward of, of everything they're, they're being recognized for. So uh, welcome to the Chapman University Athletic Hall of Fame, the 2003 National Championship Baseball Team. Thank you. Coach Shrestchak. Coach T, if I may, I have a couple of questions I'd love to ask you here. You can take this one. One of the things we didn't really talk a whole lot about in that video was just how great your team was pitching and defense. Oh, I got the ERA right here. What 1.96 ERA over the course of the season led the nation that year. What, what was it about your approach to pitching and defense that helped make this team so successful? Well, we had a great pitching staff, and uh, Coach Eddie, everybody knows, is a fantastic pitching coach. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know. That was our philosophy. We had a reputation of being you know, good on defense and not that great on offense, um, even though that was not true. Um, in fact, one thing that wasn't mentioned in all that, the very first game of the World Series, uh, the game that we played in, we had the number one defense, the number one ERA in the nation, and we were facing the number one offense in the nation, Wisconsin Oshkosh. And uh, we played there in Appleton in that stadium, and it was sold out, it was packed, and that is still the record for the most attended Division III baseball game in history. And uh, it was a fantastic game, and Ryan France threw an incredible game, and everybody played great. It was another great team victory. Um, we were definitely the underdogs. No one expected us to win. It was def and it was an Oshkosh. They were the hosts for the World Series. And it was, uh, you know, their home game. And uh, it, was, it was a great win. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I think that really set the tone that, hey, you know, Chapman's here and Chapman means business. And uh, kind of got us off and rolling there. Coach, you had teams in the World Series seven of nine years. What was so special about this club in 23, or in 03, rather? Well, I think you heard a lot of it in that video there. It was a super close team, and, uh, you know, they just had so much fun together, and they enjoyed being out there so much. They enjoyed working hard together, and they really bought in to what we wanted to do, and that was a big thing, you know. Uh, it was our first year, and it was a big concern of mine coming in. Uh, we were coming from Villa Park High School, and all oh, these high school coaches are coming in, and hey, we're good, we don't, we're going to listen to these guys, you know. So it was something that I thought about. And, you know, um, from day one, you know, they just really bought into everything that we wanted to do. And we had, like I said in that video, super strong leadership on that team. And, you know, we had talks with them. You know, funny thing. Uh, you remember different things. I remember different things. Coach Dave will say stuff, and, you know, I don't remember that. 
and then I'll say stuff, and he, he doesn't remember that. I just said something to him earlier today that he's like, no, I don't remember that. But we had, we had meetings with the leadership of the team, Ryan France, Matt Graves, Brian Sanders, Alex Taylor. We would have regular meetings, and, you know, we would talk about personnel. We would talk about everything, you know. We all, I wanted everybody to be on the same page, okay? I wanted everybody to buy in, and these guys did buy in. And because they did, you know, the rest of the team did. And so the whole team was on the same page, and guys made a lot of sacrifices um, for the team. Moving positions, maybe not getting in as much as they'd like, but everybody on that team found a role. They all found something that they could do to contribute so that we could be successful. And everybody was proud of that. And like I said in the video, you know, I had my role. I'm proud of the role I had. I'm proud of what I did, and I know all the other coaches feel the same, and I think every single player, the guys that were kind of all-American or the guys that really maybe didn't get in that much, I think they're all proud of what they did uh, for us to get that success that we did. Coach, congratulations once again. We'd love if you could stay up here just for a moment. We're going to invite uh, each member of the, two, uh, the 2003 championship team up here uh, one by one to be recognized for a, a photo opportunity here. So uh, you want, if you want to... Yeah, Doug can help uh, facilitate that. And we'll uh, start with the introductions of members from the Chapman Baseball National Championship team in 2003, starting with Scott Accomini. All right, next is John Alexander. Gabe Bonfonti. <laughs> Brian Brubaker. CJ Castillo. <laughs> Tyler Dean. John Donahoe. <laughs> Devin Drag. <laughs> Ryan France. Matt Graves. <laughs> Jeff Green. <laughs> Max Gruber. Justin Hallenbeck. <laughs> Joe Harkey. <laughs> Buddy.
Teddy Klostad. Next is Al Lambert. <laughs> Jeff Levering. <laughs> Jairo Ochoa. Travis Otot. Paul Peterson. Matt Ricardo. Brian Sanders. Billy Solentor. <laughs> Alex Taylor. <laughs> Chris Van Camp. And Evan Williams. <laughs> Assistant coaches, Mike Ryder. Jeff Cecil. <laughs> Eric Devlet. <laughs> Dave Edwards. And one more time, a congratulations to head coach Tom Tereschuk. <laughs>